What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for Rachel Goes Rogue, Chapter 10, which is called Talking About Her, and She's Not Even There. And the show notes say, Rachel addresses the fact that she continues to be a storyline this season. She is even rather shocked by what she is seeing in the episode. While I hate to break her heart, but when you have an affair for seven months, there is an aftermath. And the aftermath, whether you are there or not, has to take place. People are hurt by the actions that you caused with somebody else. And you were, yes, still part of the storyline because at that point, you were still talking to Tom. As we are seeing in this week's episode, because I know she put this out on Monday and I did not get it till tonight as, you know, Vanderpump is playing now. So I hope you all enjoy this episode and we will, of course, get into it. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and then go back and hit notifications to all so you can get notified every time I post a video or go live. All right, let's get into what she has to say about this. Hey guys, and welcome to chapter 10 of Rachel Goes Rogue. This is Rachel Savannah Levis, and I have quite a lot to say on this week's episode of Vanderpump Rules. If you are new here, I wanted to personally welcome you. I'm happy that you're here to listen to what I have to say since I'm not a part of season 11 of Vanderpump Rules this year. And I'm like in the mix still because people keep talking about me and it's it does affect me. Whew, this was a really heavy episode for me to watch. Episode three of Vanderpump Rules, it was a lot. I wasn't expecting for some of these topics to be talked about in the way that they were. It really took me off guard and I really couldn't sleep. My mind was racing and I just, you know, I had so much to say and I had to remind myself like, it's going to be okay. Like I, I have this opportunity on my own podcast to speak whatever's in my heart and whatever's on my mind in a true authentic way. So I'm very grateful to have this podcast to be able to express my opinions and my emotions and feelings that come up through this. So thank you for being here. I feel like she is making this kind of like a big deal that they're talking about her. She knows how Vanderpump Rules works. She knows when this was shot. This was shot two to three months after the affair was found out. After the reunion was taped, they began production right away. So these are from the beginning of last summer. So for her not to like understand that at this point in her life, she was still talking to Sandoval. They were still doing whatever they were doing, saying that they loved each other. He was, whatever, manipulating her mind while she was in rehab. All of that was going on. All of it got caught on camera. For her to just be like, well, they're still talking about me. And so I'm still part of this season because they're still talking about me. Like, you understood that going into this. That's why you have a therapist working with you to be able to watch these episodes, see how people are taking that situation that they had to deal with because of the actions you caused and how they are dealing with it without you since you aren't there. And you have to deal with it as well and accept the fact that they are going to be talking about you. They are going to be talking about the situation. There are people that are still attached to you at this point that felt that they had a connection with you that was more than just some affair that he had with you. So these things are going to be aired out on television because that's when production picked up the cameras and they were filming this. I just feel like she is making it seem like, well, they should all stop talking about me because, like, I've stopped talking about them. Yeah, months later, like, they're in a different headspace now than they were when they shot this as well. And I just don't think she is stressing that enough. 
and it's kind of getting me a little irritated. I don't know if it's getting you irritated. Let me know, though, down below, because that's what I'm, like, seeing by this. Just, like, by the way, she's like, ah, just kind of wish they would stop talking about me. Like, that's what I feel. Let me know what you guys think. Let's get into episode three. I have my publicist here with me. She'll be asking me some questions and I have a lot to say about it all on my own as well. So we're going to get right into it, but I'm going to hand it over to my publicist. All right. Well, let's just dig right in. So a few of the articles that have been out there has been about Tom saying that you cut him off. It was all about optics. He feels abandoned. He makes a really big deal about you not texting him on his birthday. What was that timeline? And why didn't you reach out? Okay. So I feel like there's two things to address in that question. The first is the optic statement. And he said this, if I recall correctly, he said it during the after show. He said, Rachel's publicist kept saying optics, optics, optics. And I've actually never heard my publicist say optics before. That's more of a Tom Sandoval phrase. In fact, when we were caught lying about the jacuzzi incident and Lisa was asking him about it and he wanted to come up with a story to cover up for it. He kept saying, look, it's not good optics for you to be over at my house in the jacuzzi. So optics, optics, optics that is definitely something that Tom Sandoval would say. So the reason why I didn't reach out to him, we officially stopped communication when he went to special forces and I was encouraging him to go because that would allow for me to have more of a clear mind. And this was towards the end of my treatment. Um, this was after I received that friendship lamp and the note. So yeah, I decided that I wasn't going to contact him again. And I think he was expecting for me to reach out because I got out of the Meadows July third and his birthday I believe is July 7th so I think he was expecting for me to reach out to him I didn't reach out to him and he was not too thrilled about that now I could totally see optics being a Tam Tom Sandoval word for sure optics usually means like with the political context uh, a way in which an event or a course of action is perceived by the public. So I can definitely see Tom using that. And I can also see maybe like her publicist being like, maybe this doesn't look good. But see now with the timeline of events that Rachel is giving us, she was out of the meadows before his birthday. And from what we just saw in episode now four, because I am watching this as I do this right now, he had a conversation with her before that point, which I'm not sure if it was before his birthday or what, but it was definitely after he got back from special forces. So if she said that she stopped communication with him before he went to special forces, then why was like the postcard and stuff coming to the house while he was on special forces? Why was there a conversation after special forces where we see it with the production team? So there's just some questions. I think maybe she's not really recalling the timeline really correct, or maybe she's just not really caring and just trying to make it perceived that way. I'm not going to say she is or isn't doing that, but that is just what it seems from everything that we are witnessing as well. And it's kind of hard to lie and say you didn't have a conversation when it's filmed on camera. So I don't know. You know what I mean? Clearly something's up. Though this is another thought. Maybe he was lying to production saying he was having a conversation with Rachel when it wasn't. I mean, that could be a two, but I highly doubt that. I have some things to say about that publicist claiming optics were important because first and foremost, um, him saying you dumped him because I told you to do so for any reason is actually taking the power away from you, mm -hmm. which is a decision that you made uh, through treatment. Yeah. So I think that is first a really big deal because that was your choice and your power when you came into your own more so through treatment. Secondly, what was there for me to be concerned with about the optics? Basically, you had an anxiety breakdown on the show for millions to see. You were outed, having an intimate moment to the world and humiliated, being filmed without your permission. You were exposed to having an affair despite apologizing multiple times. You were still bullied, berated, dehumanized, 
berated by a group of people that had cheated with each other, boyfriends, married people, everything else. You checked into an inpatient center for three months to do the work and the bullying didn't stop. They purposefully cast doubt that you were getting treatment. You were called a liar on cast podcasts. They told the world you were a spy. The cast, the network, none of them would tell the truth that they knew, despite me showing them proof and begging them to post where you actually were. Mm -hmm. I asked them to support you for getting help and to stop the hate. I told them that you had death threats. Um, on Watch What Happened Live, if you remember, Andy uh, asked the cast members where they thought you were when they knew exactly where you were. Mm -hmm. You were damaged and broken when you went in there. And thank goodness you got the help and did the work. Yeah. Because it could have been a very different outcome for you. Yeah. Right. So at the end of the day, I was concerned with the truth. We always put out the truth. We put the truth to the press. We put the truth out to the public, to the network. We always stood for the truth. And my only concern at that point was for you to get better. What optics? I mean, that's what a publicist's job is, is to present what is happening and present it in the best light for your client. So yes, if that was what was going on, it was perceived, yes, she's getting treatment. She's taking ownership for her actions by going and getting treatment because this was a moment in her life that she regrets. I mean, those are what a publicist's job is, is to present it in a way that benefits their client. And just like her publicist has her own opinions about the cast and what happened. The cast has their own opinions regarding everything that happened. And they are also part of this whole situation because they were friends with her. They were hurt by her actions. They are allowed to feel how they're, they're feeling. They're allowed to feel like they were betrayed by a friend. They're allowed to feel hurt. They're allowed to express that. That is their opinion and their word and just because their truth doesn't align with Rachel's truth doesn't mean that both truths aren't true. And that's what people need to understand. We are all entitled to our own opinions, even in the comments. Some people will be like, well, you're treating Rachel this way. I don't feel that way. I feel like I am giving her the benefit of the doubt. I feel like I'm giving her a fair opportunity and a chance. And just because my, uh, my opinion about Rachel doesn't align with yours doesn't mean we're both not correct. And I think... She needs to be aware of the fact that their opinions are their opinions. Their feelings are their feelings. Just like her feelings are her feelings. And she wants to be validated for her feelings. She needs to validate theirs as well. It's the same thing. It's a balance. And it will never get anywhere if people can't understand that. So I have a question for you. I know you were encouraging the network to say that I was actually at a treatment facility and not at a spa. Is there a reason why you didn't release a statement saying that I was at a treatment facility on your own to get that out there? We did. We actually, if, if you recall, well, two, so two part, the re how they could have done it was not only just in a statement, remember all the mediums they have, whether it's E news, whether it's, you know, the Bravo sites, all I did was ask them to re-put our statement out there. We had already put the statement when the person that left the meadows how did you? Yeah. That's when we had to put the statement out. Yeah. So, and that's, in, I've been doing this for 24 years and never I have I put a statement out and then been like called a liar. Mm -hmm. And then especially about something so serious, right? It's not about an opinion. It's not about running. It's not about who's dating who or who's breaking up with who. This was, you know, a, a very serious situation, um, but they refused to put it out there and they perpetuated yeah. the spa thing. Yeah. So the spa thing overtook any of our statements. I think we even requested for Bravo to tell the cast members who were going on the podcast every week saying that they know for a fact that I'm at a spa to stop saying that. And they said, we don't have any power over the cast to prevent them from saying whatever they want on their podcasts. But it's true. Bravo cannot tell the cast what they need to say on their own podcast. They do not control that. So if Sheena and Lala, who had these podcasts that were talking about this, felt that she was at a spa just from what was being reported or what they saw in different tabloids or internet blogs, that is their opinion. They don't need to stay on top of where Rachel actually was. And they weren't even concerned where she was. So when people would ask, they put out what they knew from what they had read. And yes, it does work in fucked up ways how different articles are put out in certain formats so that way it's perceived in a different light. That's why I like to read certain things and 
try to discuss them with you guys because not everything is put out there to favor somebody. It is. It does it for no matter what. If it's a newspaper, a tabloid, a blog site, it doesn't matter. It's their opinion on what's going on. They can perceive it in any type of way that they want. And sometimes they're going to perceive it in the light to continue the drama to keep going. Because everyone loves a good dumpster fire. And that's what it comes down to. They do it to please the media and how situations are going. So yes, do they perceive it in a way that she was at a spa at first? I mean, technically speaking, she did go to a spa type facility first before then going to the meadows and that is why it was perceived that way she went to two different facilities and that is why people thought she was at a spa and then when they found out she was at the meadows when that girl that left the meadows came out and said it that's when people realized she was at a mental health facility for something that's when the publicist then put out that she was at the Meadows. So how were they supposed to know anything different at that point until the publicist made her statement about her being at the Meadows? Because that is what they saw. That was all they knew at that point in time. And I think people are just not understanding the timeline of events. And it's not that hard to figure out. And I will say, a lot of them, after they found out that she was at a mental health facility, did say, I hope that she gets the treatment that she needs. I hope that she finds what she's looking for. They weren't, like, cold-hearted bitches about it. So, I, they're forgetting all of those things, too. They're not mentioning those things. They're only trying to perceive it in one way. And that's why I'm also here giving my opinion about it, because I've seen what they've said. I've seen what they've done. This is now over how many months ago, too? So, if you do want to hear those, the podcasts are up here on my channel. Both of them are up here on my channel where they speak about her being at a mental health facility and that they hope that she gets the treatment that she is looking for and that she wants and that she can take accountability for her actions and be the person that she wants to be. So, it's like, come on now. Come on. So, Lisa claims that it was shocking and, and triggering for her uh, because of her history with mental health and her brother and now her concern for Tom. How did that make you feel to see her react to him? I feel like Lisa has extended her resources to Tom more than I've ever seen that extended to me and that concern for me. And so I'm not surprised by it because I feel like it's pretty typical for Lisa to really like take the men under her wing and make sure that the men are okay but she doesn't really care about the women on the show as much like to me my perception of it it seems like the women are more disposable to her and she has invested in the tom tom name and has business with sandoval so yeah it's like okay if you were really concerned about tom having dark thoughts like you had to have considered my mental state of mind as well because we were both going through the same thing at the same time now this here for me touches home just a little bit because I've lost two of my best friends to taking their own life and it does bother me that she thinks that Lisa did not even consider her emotions in all of this. I do think that she needs to be aware that we are not mind readers and we cannot understand what someone is feeling or going through or if they are having those thoughts unless they come to us. And if she is not going to Lisa and saying, listen, this is really hard for me. This is what I'm going through. This is what I'm thinking. Lisa will never know. And just like when Lisa found out that with Tom, she did not know that was what was actually going through his mind because he led her to believe elsewhere, too, that that's not what he was going to do or think or even act. And then come to find out this was what he was thinking about, and that hurt her. And yeah, she does care about the Toms maybe more than Rachel because she is invested in their name. She's business partners with them. They've known each other longer. And... Just like Tom did not reach out to Lisa and Lisa was not aware of how Tom felt, she could not be aware of how Rachel felt if Rachel did not let her know. And that is the biggest issue that 
I know a lot of people live with some regret, like I do. Like, why didn't my friend reach out to me and let me know he needed help? And it's something that I live with every single day. And I wish that I could have done something different. But I did not know that they needed the help that they needed. And that's where this just hits home for me just a little bit. And I wish that she would understand that people cannot understand that this is where she is at in life if she does not talk to somebody and thank god that she did get the help that she needed if that's what she was thinking about and i would not want anything bad to happen to her just like i wouldn't want anything bad to happen to any of them so i'm glad that she got the help that she needed it just really it really just hits home for me but did she ever reach out to you no she didn't and she didn't care what my mental state was when she pulled that whole gram situation on me as a producer on the show do you think that she had a responsibility to treat you and Tom equally when it came to mental health support well I feel like Lisa does have a responsibility and and production does have a responsibility to treat the cast equally when it comes to caring for their mental health and you can't like preach that and then only apply it to one person or pick and choose who you're going to extend that care to yeah so I don't think that that was right Again, I don't think production had all of the details of what was going on with Rachel until that story came out when that girl left the Meadows. I think that is when they all found out, too, that she was at a facility. At that point, I think they were in contract negotiations, if that was even happening at that point. But it was about to approach at that point because they were going to go into production to shooting the next season. So I don't think that maybe production had a clue of what was going on for them to be able to put out a statement knowing that that was where she was. It's all about letting people know. If Lisa didn't know that that's what you were there for, how do you want her to reach out? And there were times that she said that she reached out and there was no answer because you didn't have your phone in the facility. So it makes, like, no sense. How are you supposed to contact someone when there is no contact? She doesn't have a phone to contact you or get back to you to let you know this is what's going on. Those are what I'm trying to say. And how is she supposed to reach out about the Graham situation when she was in the Meadows again and didn't have her phone? How was she supposed to know what actually happened with the Graham situation when this is the story that she was told? Like, I don't think that she's applying the logic behind the time frame and the time period and how it all went down. Like, am I the only one thinking this? Let me know down below. And if you sat down with her today, what would you have to say to her? I would ask her why she felt the need to lie and say that I surrendered my dog at a kill shelter and put that in the press, I would say, what was your intention in doing that? Was it to make me the ultimate villain so you could save your precious Tom Sandoval? But the thing that actually in that scene, the thing that bothered me the most was Tom talking about the podcast that Sheena had Nima on. And when I saw that clip, I immediately was like, why did he need to bring this up? If he knew how much that affected my mental well-being, why would he bring it up on national television for everybody to know about? And it's been months and months and months since that episode came out on Sheena's podcast. And so people have forgotten about it. But now that you're bringing it up on camera, addressing these rumors that impacted me so horribly... I just felt like it was like, what the hell? Like, that's messed up for you to do. Like, I really, I don't know what his thought process was because his point was that Sheena has been vindictive and bringing our name, dragging it through the mud and it's affected him. But the example he gave was something that she said about me. So I just felt like that was very unnecessary. Why did Sheena need to go into all the details? Why did Nima need to go into all the details? Like, I could just picture it. Sheena's very upset, obviously, about the TRO. And she was hyping up all of our mutual friends to talk about me and divulge personal stories. So I'm sure Nima was hyped up and in this state of like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put it all out there. The point of the podcast, which I didn't listen to until yesterday, um, because that when I found out about it, it put me in such 
a dark place. I just wanted to push it and suppress it and completely pretend like it didn't happen, I think. Again, with the Graham situation, Lisa was only going off what she was told, off of what she knew. And she didn't have full details because she couldn't talk to you to get the full details. So how do you want her to sympathize with what was going on with that situation when she had no idea until later on? And then with this whole podcast. Now, I did not get to cover this podcast when it came out. And I did grab it. So I will say that Sheena did remove the podcast from her YouTube channel when she did find out that this was... What pushed Rachel supposedly over an edge and it bothered her and she didn't want anyone to feel that way. So she did remove it off of her YouTube channel, though it is still up on her podcast network. So I do have the audio. I did start listening to it and putting commentary to it because I was interested in hearing just what this podcast had to say that pushed Rachel over the edge. My thing is too... She just admitted to us that she never listened to this episode until recently. So what did she hear from that episode if she didn't listen to it that pushed her to that point? And I will say that Nima, yes, is a mutual friend to them. He is also an ex-boyfriend not only to Sheena, but to Rachel. And he is entitled to tell his story and what he knows as well. And from what it it seems, and what I've read and what I've seen and researched, he wanted to go on the podcast and give his side to things because he wanted to explain what was said during the Coachella thing. And that was something that he wanted his truth out there. Just as much as she wants her truth out there, he's entitled to putting his truth out there as well. So I will say, if you are interested in hearing this podcast, this that podcast will be out next. So if you are not subscribed to my channel with your notifications on, I would do that now so that you can get notified when I post this video next because it is a very interesting podcast and I can understand why it did bother her, but I'm not understanding how it bothered her if she didn't hear it in full until the other day. Does that make any sense? Like, I understand, like, hearing certain things, like not watching a video someone makes on me, but then hearing, well, they said this about you, they said that about you, they said this about you. Okay, I can understand that. But how can I be that pushed over an edge if I don't actually hear it and get the anxiety, get that feeling of, oh my God, this is so horrible, oh my God, this is so crazy, and get that whole panic attack, anxiety, I can't do this anymore, I can't do this, I can't do this. So that's what's bothering me, and I don't know, I just think there are key words that she has said and what she's admitting to that maybe makes this a little clearer for all of us, and that just doesn't make sense. Like, I just know how it is for me, so I can understand that's why I don't watch videos that are done that are made on me, because I know it will get me to a level and affect my mental health that won't be good, so I just don't watch them, and if people come to me and say, this is what was said, it's like, all right, whatever, I can shrug it off, so I'm not quite understanding how it affected her as impactfully as it, she is saying it did, which I know it probably did impact her in a way, but why did it impact her in such a way that it pushed her to that last little bit? That is what I'm confused about, and I'm just maybe overthinking this. Like, we all are. Can you explain who Nima is or was? So Nima is this guy who Sheena set me up with to go on a date. He was on Shaws of Sunset, and Sheena likes to network and stay in touch with a lot of the cast on different shows and so she figured since I was in a rut and not interested in dating that she would set me up with someone who she thought was a reliable person to take me on a good date and Hannah Burner's wedding was coming up and she was like well you know it's a possibility that he could ask you to Hannah Burner's wedding and then you can come with me and Brock and it could be like a full fun thing and I was like okay yeah that sounds fun so we dated I mean if you can even call it dating we hung out a few times uh and we were like voice memoing each other over text and and the thing that I liked about Nima was that he really encouraged me to use my voice and this was at a time when I was still self-conscious about the way my voice sounded so nothing came of it like we both were kind of like in this mental space of this is a casual thing but yeah, Sheena really pushed for 
that to come into fruition. And then she's like using it against me to say that I'm some type of promiscuous woman. Now, what maybe some people are forgetting is back in 2020, Shayna also dated Nima. They went on a couple of dates, six roughly that they said, before actually Sheena had met Brock. This was before Brock was even in the picture. So Nima knew Sheena not only just from Bravo and networking, but she also dated him. So she knew kind of what kind of a guy he was, that he was a good guy, that he just wasn't for her. So I do believe as a friend, she really thought that maybe this guy could be good for her friend. Like, it didn't work out with them, but didn't mean it couldn't work out with a friend because she knew what type of guy he was. He wasn't some guy that she just dated that was a bad guy. He was a good guy, and they still had a friendship afterwards, and they respected each other, and she thought, hey, you know what? I got a friend for you. This guy would be great. I really don't think there was anything malicious behind that and yeah okay maybe he can ask you to hand a burner's wedding and then you can come and we can have like a cute double date kind of thing like you know what it happened just like rachel dated him so did sheena the problem is how it ended how it separated apparently it didn't separate in a bad way but apparently maybe he felt some type of way that she was unaware of and he put it out there. He's entitled to those feelings just like she's entitled to hers. I don't think that Sheena was also making her seem like some kind of promiscuous woman. I think that it was just her, re- you know, ending things with James and getting back into the mix of things and dating again and all of that. And yeah, they were at a bad place when she made that podcast with Nima. I don't think it, though, it was as intentional as she is making it seem more than someone just telling their side to events. Especially at this point in time, people were trying to figure out when the affair actually began, if it was actually seven months ago or if it was longer, because there were rumors of things happening and being said at Coachella, which came from Nima, which he heard it from Rachel. So There's a lot of questions here, and that's why I also want to bring the podcast to my channel so we can all hear that as well. James was featured a lot too, right? So he shockingly had very mild things to say regarding Tom, right? There was like all this energy, but nothing very... uh, When on Watch What Happens Live? Yes, when Andy asked him about the podcast. Are you surprised that his demeanor was so calm? No, I'm not surprised because I think he kind of ignores a lot of what's happening in the press like he it doesn't get to him in a way because he doesn't give it his attention so I highly doubt that he's listening to my podcast and then he also said um that Tom's revelation that he still loves Raquel gave him the ick thoughts on James still having feelings about this how does that make you feel um thoughts on James having feelings about this I mean I I understand the ick part because our whole friend group like saw Tom and Ariana together as like in it for the long haul, no matter like what their relationship was at. And I'm hesitant to even talk about this stuff because I know you guys have a lot of opinions on it. But um, yeah, I think because you wouldn't really picture Tom with me and that concept is icky. Yeah, I understand that. In the, episode, in the actual episode, James and Sandoval have a heated conversation about betrayal. And it seems like he's still very hurt by Sandoval's actions. Do you find it odd that he is seemingly in a relationship where he claims to be the happiest he's ever been, but yet still he feels betrayed by Sandoval? Um, yeah, I mean, is he the happiest he's ever been? That's only for him to say. <laughs> but um, Yeah, I, I think he was just kind of throwing that in my face to make me feel bad when he said that he's the happiest he's ever been. Oh, she's the love of my life. James looked up to Tom as someone he admired and Tom was there for him when James was always the underdog and really encouraged James to be a part of filming even though their friendship wasn't like a close friendship but James admired Tom and he didn't think that Tom would be capable of doing this and James and I were engaged so yeah I can see how it's a betrayal I think maybe comparing James to Ariana it doesn't quite equate, even though the dynamics are similar. It's interesting. Yeah. 
Whether James said he was the happiest he's ever been or not has nothing to do with Rachel, in my opinion. I think he is truly happy with Allie, and they make a great couple. I think he's matured a lot, and he's doing a lot of great things, and he's seeing who he really is as a person, and I think that has a lot to do with her. I really do, and that is my opinion. And I really don't think that he said that to hurt her more than he said that because he meant it, whether it was so soon to feel that way or not. That is how he felt, and he's entitled to that as well. But she's also entitled to feel like that was a kind of throw in her face. And I can see where maybe she feels that way. Now, I know that James and Sandoval have their own little history. And like I had said previous, the difference between what James did to Tom is a lot different. In my opinion, though, it could be different for you guys. I see it as he had just met the guy. He had not even known the guy three months. And he was young and dumb. And he was doing his own stupid shit, too. And he, you know chose a girl over a guy at that point that he didn't think he was going to be friends with for all these years later on. And I do think it's a different situation. And I don't understand why she's trying to compare Ariana and Tom to James and her because yes, it is a different dynamic. And even though he was not with Rachel when this happened, he is still entitled to be a hurt from the situation, because this was someone that he considered a role model, someone he looked up to, someone he enjoyed their friendship with, that he cherished, and he's allowed to feel hurt that this guy went and did this to him as a friend. It might not even have anything to do with Rachel, more than that this person could do this to me, knowing what that that was my ex fiance. Like, it just, it's, it's breaking a guy code that it's like her breaking a girl code. They are very, yes, similar, but the situations are different and the situations can be different. They're very equal in the same sense of hurt and pain. Do you think that James's anger has less to do with you and more to do with his own friendship? I think it has less to do with me because I remember, I, I don't know if it aired or not, but I remember filming where he called me and I picked up and he said, I'm less mad at you and I'm more mad at Tom. I think James's anger had more to do with his friendship with Tom and his his idea of who Tom really was. And since that perception was shattered, I think he was perhaps like grieving that friendship. Yeah. How long ago was, did your relationship with James end? It ended December 2021. Because do you find it at all odd that he still does get so angry or charged up to when he's talking about you? Because I think even as a viewer, lots of people comment and say, is he just not over her or, or is it just that he, Tom had, had you and he didn't at that point or something strange there? I think James is just an angry person. Like things will, will rub him the wrong way and he'll take things very personally. So, I mean, it doesn't really surprise me. I've seen him angry a lot. And then his reaction in the episode versus on Watch What Happens Live and that calmness he had on the, on the after show. Is that interesting to you at all? Um... Not really, because he kind of lives in his own world. I think the anger came up in that moment for him and he expressed it. And now that it's been months later, he's like, he doesn't really care as much. And that's what we see on his most recent appearance on Watch What Happens Live. I'm glad that she can acknowledge that she has a feeling it has more to do with the friendship. Because I think that's what we are seeing. That's what is being portrayed. That is what he himself is even saying that it was more of the hurt of the friendship from Tom Sandoval than it had anything to do with Rachel. Yes, it just made it that much worse that it was Rachel. I mean, it would have been the same kind of hurt, I mean, if it was another friend lying to him. I think that it adds up more because, yes, it's an ex-girlfriend of his and is was someone he was also very close to and everyone was betrayed by the actions of these two and it is kind of like a what the fuck even though he's moved on he's allowed to be hurt he's allowed to feel something even though he's in a relationship i mean she would have felt the same way if it happened to her and i don't think she's putting herself in his shoes and you know what good for him that he's moved on and i do believe that she acknowledges that and i give her credit because yes where he was when he was filming is a lot different than where he was when he is now doing Watch What Happens Live how many months later after it was filmed, after production, after all of that. They're all in a different space, even herself. I do 
want to talk about though like i do think it's interesting that tom is holding the Kristen thing over james's head yet tom has gone out of his way to help plan james's proposal to me and like drop money on that and i think a lot of people are confused by that too a lot of people suspect that tom and i were seeing each other while james and i were together that is false i asked tom about why he was so invested emotionally and financially in James's proposal to me. And he said that it was because of the show that he felt like because we were in a COVID season and there wasn't a lot going on that he felt if he put money down to make this extravagant thing, it would look great for cameras and it would contribute to the overall success of the show. How did that make you feel hearing that? You know, it was interesting because even I was questioning him. I was like, so were you into me back then? Because you did contribute so much. And he was like, no, 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 no. It wasn't like that. It was just for the show. And I was like, okay, so this guy really cares about the success of the show. And taking a step back and looking at it now, I can see how the show is like his higher power. And it controls a lot of his decisions in life. Here we go into Sandoval being a narcissist. This is why he has some narcissistic traits. Again, I am not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I'm not diagnosing him. I'm saying he has narcissistic traits just by certain things that he says and he does. And it's clear to see and those are my opinions on it. One of the things a narcissist likes to do is give gifts. It's a way to control the situation. It's something we even seen with Jax and his wedding where Tom was doing things to secure his spot as a groomswin to be next to Jax up there in the spotlight, have the attention semi put on him. It is something that Tom Sandoval does. And I think that he was trying to do the same thing, in my opinion, with James, was to kind of secure that spot, whether it be a groomsman in their wedding or being like, well, he's a best friend. Look at what he did. He helped with the engagement party. He is so for our love. Like, that was his way of being able to have some kind of control over that situation and be a part of that situation. And that's just how I see it. And I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that he did it because he liked Rachel? Do you think that he did it just to be a good friend? Do you think he did it because of the show? Like, what are your opinions on that? Because I do believe that he did it to kind of secure his spot, whether it be for the show in a position where he was up there next to them when they were getting married, or to be like, listen, look at what I did for you as a friend. Maybe I should be your best man. That's how I see Tom. And he's done that before. And we've seen it how it turns out and it doesn't turn out very well for him because people can read him like a open book. Jax has always been able to read him though. He's given in to him. Jax has been pretty fucking right about a lot of people. Okay. So on the episode, Sheena had a conversation with Tom in the back of the restaurant and he brought up the podcast guest, Mimi Nima, mm-hmm. and it appeared that he had your back. He was mm-hmm. saying that it should have been more about the comment about the open relationship rather than him going into all the detail mm-hmm. he did. How do you feel watching that back, seeing him defend you in the moment? Do you feel that was sincere? I was actually happy that he was defending me in that moment because what he said was accurate. That when I found out about that podcast that Sheena recorded with Nima, I was in the meadows and my mom told me about it. And she's like, hey, I just want you to know that Sheena had Nima on. And I already knew at this point that Sheena was talking about me every single day, it seemed like. And so it just threw me off. And my mom said they were talking about explicit sexual things with your sexual life. And my mind just went spinning because I didn't know what was being said. I was just thinking the absolute worst. And when you are in intimate relations with somebody, usually that remains between the two of you. And so I was pretty surprised that Nima would talk on that and speak about that. 
especially because Nima was upset at me when I went on Sheena's podcast and talked about our date that I went on and how it went. And Sheena was like picking for that and encouraging me to speak on it. I didn't think that I said anything bad, but he was like, you, you know, like I'm a business professional and people are looking at me. And when they hear things like this, it, it looks bad on me. So he was scolding me for opening up about that dating situation and how it went down. And so this is vindictive. <laughs> yeah, possibly he's trying to get back at me for painting him in a bad light, which I don't think it was a bad light. I thought it was also very interesting that Nima said on Sheena's podcast that people need to lay off Tom Sandoval and that he's going through a lot right now. And you can't, you know, people are talking about mental health, this mental health, that yet they're like going in on Tom Sandoval. And we really have to think about how this is affecting his well-being. But Rachel, let's get into it. Let's tear this girl up because she's not a human. Right. Now, whether it was done to be vindictive or not, is really up to Nima why he did what he did. And that is one of the main reasons why I kind of want to bring the podcast episode here to my channel so we can all take a listen, so we can all discuss it and all come to a conclusion about how we feel about what happened with that podcast episode. I do think she has her right to speak on it since she never got a choice. I do think this answers a lot of questions that we all had and even Sheena brought up the point during the episode like how did she hear this podcast episode if she didn't even have her phone in Meadows? So this clears up that answer. Her mom told her about the podcast and I can understand all of the frustrations, all of the pain that she was going through, having all of this being brought to light with the whole Tom situation, and then on top of it, more things coming out about her. I can see where she was, you know, getting a little flustered and getting a little upset and getting very emotional about everything that was going on and feeling like it was never going to end. And sometimes this is what happens when one thing comes to light, a lot of other things come to light. And yeah, it was not fair how he told people to lay off Sandoval and not give Rachel any grace. I do believe that and I do think that. And I don't think anyone was really considering her feelings, let alone I don't think that even Sheena gave a a fuck really about how Nima felt about Sandoval at that point and he's entitled to feel that way and feel hurt from Rachel too I mean everyone's entitled to feel how they want to feel and if Nima felt that way yeah it was kind of fucked up on his part that he wasn't thinking about her mental health situation and having a clue that she was getting help because of how far people were like pushing this but she also needed to come to the conclusion to herself that her actions caused all of this to go down and if she actually put more thought and effort into it all before it happened none of this would have been like this and it's kind of hypocritical for her to be like well he talked about very intimate details in our relationship where she is now speaking about intimate details between her and Sandoval and she's not putting that into per a perspective that like she's not taking that into consideration about what happened we never knew about the whole pool incident like we knew that it happened at his house and all of that but the intimate details of that night we did not know until Rachel came on her podcast and gave us those intimate details so this is where it's like come on now you're you're saying one thing but then doing another as well so you can't expect someone not to do the same if you're doing it too did nima ever reach out after that podcast or to date has he reached out no and then in your opinion do you think that tom brought this stuff up on camera because it was his only chance to confront sheena and defend you or was it self-serving to clear his own name about a story he claims was false interesting question um I don't know, like, was it to be spiteful to me because I didn't reach out to him on his birthday and that's why he wanted to bring it up? Maybe. Uh, maybe it was like he really did want Sheena to know how it affected me. I didn't address it sooner because it's something that I already processed through. But it is not okay for somebody else to tell other people that they have expressed feelings of not wanting to live anymore. Tom already brought this up about me on Tamara and Teddy's podcast, Two Teas in a Pod. And 
that one I really went in deep processing with my therapist because it was like, whoa, why are you talking about this personal information that was like privy to only your ears? Like this is a vulnerable topic, a vulnerable position for me to be sharing with you. And you're like telling Teddy and Tamara and whoever else is listening to this popular podcast that I have had dark thoughts. But the way that he said it too, he made it seem like we had a suicide pact. Like it was some Romeo and Juliet love story. Ugh, like, oh, that was, that really angered me. So when he said it again, and I understand like, yes, he was defending me to Sheena and exposing for her for how vindictive she really was. But it's also not okay to be discussing that personal emotional turmoil state of mind with the rest of the world. And now it's a topic of conversation that really crossed a boundary. I do think that Tom kind of had an agenda when he was telling Sheena that. I also think that he kind of wanted to make that impact with Sheena, like, because of this, you hurting us, this did this to us, and you hurt Rachel so bad that you pushed her to this point. It was done in an optics to make them look like this is what has been happening to us because of all the retaliation that we're getting from our fuck up. Literally, that's what I believe Tom was doing when he was talking to Sheena. I think he wanted to make Sheena hurt for the pain that she put onto him by the things that she was saying, though she was hurt from what he did. And it's a back and forth kind of volleyball game in that sense. But I do believe that Tom had a motive by saying what he did. And it is kind of fucked up. And you can't be just throwing that out there for people not to understand the impact and the gravity of that situation. And I don't think that he necessarily understands the impact and the gravity of a situation like that. And I think he uses that to his benefit. And I'm not saying that he never felt that way. I'm just saying maybe those were thoughts that he is now using to be like, look at me, I'm a victim. And people do do that as well. And it, it gives a bad name for the whole mental health situation in general. And it fucks with people. And that's why I don't like when people just say it to use it as a weapon instead of saying it because they want help and they need help because they're feeling that way. And that's what really fucking bothers me about that. Let me ask you this because the root of this is this conversation about the open relationship. Yes. I did not tell Nima that Tom told me that he was in an open relationship. What I told Nima when I was explaining to him my experience at Coachella, staying with Tom and Ariana and a few of our friends in that Airbnb Tom and I and Jesse were in the jacuzzi. Our feet were in the jacuzzi and we were talking until 5 a.m. The sun was coming up and we were listening to Dua Lipa and talking about relationships and whatnot. And nothing happened that weekend. But also like Tom and Ariana were extra lovey towards me. And so when I told Nima this experience, what I said was, Tom and Ariana give off an open relationship vibe. And he was like, oh, that's interesting. Do you think they're in an open relationship? And I was like, no, I don't think that they are. But it's it was a weird energy. And he said, do you think Tom is interested in you like that? And I was like, yeah, it felt like he was. And then he said, would you act on that? And I said, no, I would be more likely to hook up with Ariana than I would with Tom. That's what I said. <laughs> and so... You know, and that was that when he relayed that information to Sheena, I guess he took it as I was saying that Tom told me that he and Ariana were in an open relationship and that was not the case. He did not tell me that. And it's interesting, too, because Sheena confronted me about it. She asked me like, hey, I heard from somebody that you told them that Tom said they were in an open relationship. And I was like, no, I never said that. And she's like, well, this person is a trusted source and they told me that you did. And I was like, well, I didn't. Who is this person? And maybe that would help me understand where this is coming from. And she refused to tell me who it was. And so I was like, OK, like I'm leaving it because it's not true. That was maybe in January. 
of 2023. Seems like she waited a while to let that one out the bag, right? Well, she let that out the bag when we were picked up for filming. And that was the rumor that she wanted to address to have Nima on because it seemed like she was protecting this person. Nima was trying to clear his name. Sheena was trying to clear her name. And you got dragged in the middle. Yes. Again, her timelines just don't add up because January of 2023, they weren't even filming anymore. Nima wouldn't have been on the show. Nima wasn't on the podcast until it was June of 2023 so this doesn't make sense i think she's getting her timelines like wrong because she said january of 2023 which is when you know big bear happened all of that and now to address the open relationship it's like one minute she's sitting here on her podcast and even on vanderpump saying like well tom gave me the perspective that they were in an open relationship and that's where she had a ha ha joke that like maybe ariana will accept me and we can have this crazy like th- group relationship kind of thing like she joked about that even on the podcast and now she's trying to deny it though she even said that like this is what he gave off this vibe that they were in an open relationship and like that's what she thought from tom so how is it odd that he heard this from her and got this opinion as well and yet now she's sitting like here trying to deny it saying well no that's not what i said like i got the vibe they were in an open relationship and that i would probably hook up with ariana and not tom like so one minute you're saying one thing and the next minute you're saying another. And this is why people think that you're lying about certain things because it just doesn't make sense. Am I the only one like thinking this? Cause like, I swear she's just not making sense. So Tom has since said that he's in a better place about it all now. Where do you stand? It's hard to say where I stand just because I wasn't expecting to address Sheena's podcast with Nima on. And having the, that be brought up in this season and because like that is what led me to my darkest thoughts. It was really difficult for me to hear that and know that I was being hit with that now. I didn't listen to the podcast when I got out. And so I didn't hear it until yesterday. And it was hurtful. I think my brain really went to like the worst case scenario. And that's when I was like, I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. I just hope that we're holding Nima accountable and we're holding Sheena accountable for two different things. I think it shows a lot about a person if there's somebody who kisses and tells. And I don't know why someone would want to date somebody like that. A. B. With Sheena, I hope that this brings to light how vindictive she was this past summer. And... It was relentless. Tom was not exaggerating how vindictive Sheena was. I'm not saying that Sheena wasn't vindictive with what she did. I do believe she was truly hurt. And everyone does pain differently. They take the hurt and they do things and they act on it because they are hurt. And they say things because they are hurt. And she was petty because she was hurt. And I do think that people need to consider this a little bit more. I understand people were hurt, but I also truly believe that no one wanted them to be put in a situation where they were choosing life or death. I do believe they have a heart that they cared. They just were not thinking like this is what's going to push this person over the edge. And that is something that people need to be more aware of. And people are not made more aware of other people's emotions unless they are made aware that this is what is going on. So you cannot know that you are pushing someone to a ledge unless they are saying, listen, what you are doing is pushing me so far fucking to the edge that I'm about to jump. How are people supposed to know what they are doing to somebody if they're not told. And that is something that really like, it's a hard situation. It's a hard situation in general because it's hard for someone to even admit that they're even at that level. 
they shut down. They don't talk to anybody. And it's hard. And a lot of people do not understand mental health. And I think it's something that people need to be more aware of. And with her platform, I think she needs to focus on a little bit more things to do with mental health and how to better improve your mental health than just keep playing this relentless back and forth game with people. I know she's trying to be vulnerable and put herself in a position where she's able to see what's going on in this new season and be able to address it. But there are just some things you need to move forward and past. And I think it is very hypocritical that she can sit here and say, well, you can't, don't kiss and tell, when that's what she's done as well with this whole situation too. She's talked about different things people that she's kissed and she's told about it so how can she get mad at someone when she's done the same thing I just think it's a lot of messy situations and a lot of situations where people were very hurt by what happened and they expressed it in a way that they were thinking was bettering them or was helping the situation but it was hindering it and they weren't really caring about what that other person felt at that time because that person didn't care about their feelings when they were doing what they were doing in the affair. So that's it. it, Unfortunately, it sucks. And I do believe that Sheena would say what she has to say. She's talked about it on the after show actually on Bravo, which you guys can go listen to. I'll link it down below. And she talks about this whole situation with the podcast and it's very telling. And I would play it for you guys now, but I don't want to have any issues with Bravo claiming this video for you guys. I want to just get it out for you. So check out the link below. And she does talk about it, like I said, in the after show. It's very, very telling. Okay, so let's take that for a minute. And we you filed the TRO. You didn't want to ultimately hurt her, so you took it back down. Yeah. Now, you mentioned you regretted it because you had a long-term interest at heart. But now, looking back at how she continued to act. How, do you still feel that was the right decision to let it go? Or how do you feel about that? I don't think it was the right decision to let it go. I think by going through with it and holding her accountable, I would be standing by what I believed was right and wrong. And it's recognized in the court of law. So do you feel by Sheena bringing on her podcast episode with Nina onto the show, that it was sort of her redemption or to prove that she was right? vindicating herself because she really couldn't after the assault. So this gave her sort of another angle to clear her name or give herself credit. Yeah, I think people were questioning whether or not she knew about Tom and I. And if she was sitting on information where Tom told me and I told Nima that Tom said he was in an open relationship, then it's like, oh, well, why didn't you say this sooner? So I think she was really trying to clear her name with the friend group and like, hey, like I didn't say that somebody else did. It's Nima and he's going to clear it up for all of us. So I think she was trying to rehab her image. My opinion with the whole TRO thing has not changed. I think that it was done out of spite and anger And I don't believe that it was necessary. And even if she did get the TRO or uh, active restraining order, that would not be harming her or harassing her in that sense by having someone come on their podcast and having their First Amendment right, being able to speak what they felt happened in their relationship with Rachel and how things happened went down and were said in all of that. And the whole open relationship thing was something that was talked about during the season because it was something that she had heard from somebody. And Nima even said when he went on the podcast, and I'm not going to give it all away, but like he wanted to clear Sheena's name on that because this is who heard it from Rachel and how it all began. So, I mean... You got to see both sides of the perspective. I could see where each person is coming from and why each person's upset. And I do believe that she's now kind of being a little petty by saying like, yeah, I would have gone through with the TRO now and held her accountable for her actions. It's like everyone wants to hold everyone accountable, but no one's holding themselves accountable for what they are doing to each other. And that is the problem here. So this one's kind of going back to the episode too. Billy Lee said to abandon Tom. Do you feel like you did? Um, a little bit. Yeah, I do. But, you know, 
I've been advised that that would be the best way for me to end it because if I tried to explain the reasons why I'm breaking up with him, he would figure out a way to get back into my good graces. I mean, I even tried to break up with him before he went on special forces. And I said, like, I don't want to do this anymore. This isn't healthy for me. And he was like, please don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. And then he started talking about how Kyle Chan had to come over and remove the guns from his house. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, like, please don't choose a permanent solution to temporary problem. Like now I'm talking him off the ledge. And so, you know, like after he did that, it was like, well, I don't, you know, he's going to pull something to keep me in his grasp. So, yeah, I just had to ghost him. Okay, so when you cut him off, then now, how does it feel seeing him in the confessionals and things he has to say? Um, Yeah, I don't enjoy seeing it. And I think as the season progresses, we'll see. I predict that we will see him turn on me once he really realizes that I'm not coming back. We've kind of seen him in the after show kind of giving me jabs, giving you jabs, saying that it was all for optics and that's all I really care about. I'm like, if that's not projection, I don't know what is, okay? So do you think up to this point in the show, the things he's saying, he's thinking, oh, she's going to be back and we're going to be together? Yeah, absolutely. He was bringing all of this up on camera preparing for me to come back. And I think maybe that was manipulative and knowing that I'm going to have to address these things in my confessionals and in real life conversations. And that, you know, he was this hero for standing up for me. And, you know, I would have been mad at him for bringing it up in the first place, but he would have like really swooped in and sold me on like how he was really there for me when nobody else was. And um, yeah, I think it was strategic. And listen, I'm not saying Sandoval isn't strategic. I do think he thinks about these things. I do think that he acts upon certain things to make himself look better. I also think that he was led to be believed at this point that they had a chance and that they both felt a certain way about each other. And if she really wanted to end it before Special Forces, she could have. And I understand, like having to talk somebody off an edge and like feeling like you don't want to then do this to that person because then that person would then, you know, maybe act upon it. I get it. I get it. I get it. That's when you need to call his friend. And you know exactly how you were feeling with all the situation. If you did not feel it was healthy for you, you could have made that decision. I do think, though, the best solution was what she did do, which was just cut all contact with him off and just not lead him on anymore, not let him believe like there was a chance, all of that. I know it hurts. I know he got through it though. And they both are out on the other end of this and they're both living their lives and they're both growing from the situation and they got through that difficult part in their life. Now, Billy Lee as a friend, she was looking out for Tom and she kind of felt like that's what Rachel did to Tom. So she's allowed to feel that way too. Like, I think that the best thing was that this ended the way it did and she cut all contact off from him and she didn't come back. I think that's the best thing for her at this moment. And I hope that she does grow from this. And I do think that we are going to see Tom have a change in the season once he finds out it's completely over with Rachel. And we are going to see how he reacts. And this is why we have to remember these first episodes are at the beginning of the season when everybody was just getting off this huge high, coming down from everything and learning all the details. And still all the details were not learned until finally podcasts like this coming out. So, you know, it is what it is. Oh, man, I feel like this episode really um, it was a lot to watch and it was heavy. Like this is heavy, serious stuff. I think how they closed out the episode with the disclaimer with the suicide hotline. I'm happy that they did, but I'm a little disappointed that they didn't really treat me with that concern. I'm just so grateful that I was able to get the mental health treatment and attention that I needed so desperately. And um, yeah, that that place like really saved me and helped me to get out of this chaotic world. And I think it's only going to get heavier and heavier from here. I think they all touch upon 
this topic throughout the season more and more. Like I said, details were being still learned about at that point. Everything is still at a high at the beginning of the season as it's coming down and it slowly will unfold and I was happy to see that they provided the mental health hotline number at the end of even this week's episode so I believe that like Bravo is doing their end of the things though I do know that Being an actor, actress, and reality TV, all of that, there are different contracts. It's not like a normal job where you get, like, health benefits and all of that. And I do think that there are different situations that happen where I do think that they should offer services to actors and actresses to get therapy if they choose. And that's a whole different subject, though. It is something that, as She's an actress. It's something she needs to worry about if that's the career that she wants to go in. And I think that there are other things that we need to even think about, even as content creators, as influencers. People don't think about other people's mental health when they're attacking each other. So there's a lot of different situations when it comes to mental health. And I do want to bring more awareness myself here on my channel. And I would love for you guys to join me with also bringing awareness as well. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I do have a feeling we are going to get chapter 11 this week, so stay tuned for that. Um, But definitely make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Then go back and hit notifications to all. That way you get notified every time I post a video or go live. I'm going to be bringing a lot to this channel, so I want you all to enjoy it. I love makeup. It's a passion of mine. It's like a side hobby. I get Ipsy every month, so stay tuned for my February Ipsy box because that is very good. It was an icon box this month, so if you like makeup, you'll like all the different things that I got in my icon box. And I do have a referral link down below if you'd like to sign up for your subscription to Ipsy. So... But I hope you all have a wonderful night, and I will be back very soon with more Vanderpump stuff and more Bravo, along with other amazing things here on my channel. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Gonna burn all the bridges between us. I can't focus. I can't